In this video, we are going to create pickable items so that we have some items in our inventory. We are going to be able to pick up more items. And as you can see, some were stacked and some were added to another slot. And we can pick up another item. And two swords were added as non stackable items to the separate slots. So that's what we are going to explore in this video to test our inventory stack stacking functionality. Okay, let's get going. Let's test our stacking functionality or rather our functionality to add items to our inventory by creating a very simple pickup system. So let's uh, open our player or actually canvas and let's hide for now the inventory. So what we want to do is also hide the mouse follower and we want to maybe let's go to scripts right click create a new folder and let's call this pickup system. Okay. So our pickup system basically will be a collider or trigger that will collide with our capsule collider. And in that case, we are going to simply add to the inventory uh, the uh, items. So first of all, let's go to the pickup system folder, right click create and let's create a script. Let's call it item. Okay. Let's open this script up. Okay. And let me paste the code here and we are going to go through it. We're going to use item uh, from the inventory system. So we have public class item mono behavior field, serialized field, public item inventory item. And this will be a property. So again, you can type prop, tap, tab twice, and you will have the property and simply uh, type uh, then type correctly the name and the setting setter will be private so that we can only set it from the level of the inspector. Of course, we need to right click on this item as so a quick action and say using inventory dot model. We could possibly place the item inside the inventory itself, since uh, basically our model uses this item. It is not that uh, part of the model, uh, but let's leave it like it is for now. And we are going to have a field serialized field public quanti int quantity. So again, we are going to set it to be one, but this will be the quantity of the item that we can pick up. Uh, for some feedback, we are going to have a serious field private audio source audio source and the duration for the animation serialized field private float duration equals 0.3 F. We will need to have some sprites. So we're going to have, have a private void start get component sprite render sprite equals inventory item dot item image. So we are going to use the same image from our item as so to be the sprite of this item. And we are going to have a, a internal void or so let's call it public void destroy item so we want to destroy the item after the animation stops playing so we are going to have a git component collider enabled false we are going to start coroutine animate item pickup so we are going to basically call this method when we pick up the item so we disable the collider and play the animation to show that we have picked up the item so to give some feedback to the player and the animation will be private i enumerator so this will be coroutine animate and animate item pickup we're going to call start coroutine animate item pickup in the destroy item we're going to use audio source dot play we're going to set vector 3 start scale to be transform dot local scale and vector 3 end scale equals vector 3 0 so we want to scale the item down until it, its scale is 0 and then we want to destroy the item we are going to have float current time equals 0 and we are going to have while current time is less than the duration, so we have defined at the top duration equals 0.3. We're going to have current time plus equals time dot delta time and transform dot local scale equals vector 3 dot lerp. So let me put it on the next line. And we are going to have start scale and scale, and we are going to divide the current time by the duration to get the value from 0 to 1. And we are going to yield return and null. At the end, we are going to have local scale equals end scale, and we are going to destroy the game objects. So we can basically delete this. Okay, so this will be the code for our item. Let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. We will need to have also a script called pickup system. So right click create a C sharp script. Let's call it pickup system. Okay. Let's lead the update and start methods and let me paste the code that we are going to have here. It will be much shorter class. Now we are going to rely on the inventory SO reference value. So we're going to have serialized field private inventory SO inventory data. Right click on this quick actions and say using inventory.model library. 
So this way we can uh, use the inventory model, so inventory SO, in different systems without worrying about the UI. Now, we are going to have the private void on trigger enter, so you can type on trigger and you should have the autocomplete here, simply create the on trigger enter 2D. And you will have this definition of the method. So we are going to have item item equals collision get component and we are going to simply collide with the item that is on the ground. Now, if the item is not null, we are going to check uh, int remainder will be equal to inventory data add item in item inventory item item quantity. Now, in case we are trying to add an item that we cannot really store, we are going to return the quantity, the, the remainder quantity, and we're going to set the quantity of this item to be lower. Else, we are going to have the, uh, to destroy this item, so if remainder equals zero item, destroy item, we are going to disable the collider and play the animation. Okay, and this will be it, so let's save this, let's go back to Unity. Okay, so obviously we need to select our player V2, and we need to drag here our pickup system on this game object, so now it will use the capsule collider on this game object to detect the on trigger enter collision. We need to, of course, also assign here inventory data reference, and we have only one. But basically, since many scripts in our system has, rely on this inventory data, we may want to have a separate mono behavior. This will serve as the access point for other scripts to get the reference, because right now, if we change this inventory as O here, we should change the same field in the inventory controller. So it would be much better to have a common script that is a source of the reference to this player inventory as O. Okay, nevertheless, well, what we need to do now is create the item itself. So right click in the hierarchy, create the empty game object. And we are going to call this item. It will need to have a sprite render. We are going to reset the position, so the transform reset. Okay, the sprite render, it will can stay, uh, stay as is. Our background is rendered on the background layer, so def default layer should be on top of this. And what we want to do here is we want to add, a, let's minimize the sprite render, let's add circle, collider 2D. Let's focus on it, so let's select this item, uh, click F inside our uh, scene view, and let's use move tool to move this item here. Let's add uh, the item script here. And we are going to assign the inventory item, let's say that this will be our apple and let's say the quantity will be 5. And we are going to add audio source here. So we are going to have the feedback and let's select audio clip. We should have something like coin and we should have this coin sound effect that we are going to use. Uncheck the play on awake and we are going to decrease the volume just to give us some a feedback about what is going on in the game. Let's set the volume to be 0.1 and now this should be good. Uh, so now what we want to do is let's try pressing play and let's see what happens. Now we have this Apple image, so this is the image taken from the item. Now in our inventory we have seven uh, apples now because two apples were added to, to the inventory and we have added them and stacked them together as you might recall uh, inside our player v2 inside inventory system we had the quantity 5 and quantity 2 and those were uh, stacked together using our newly created code so now we have seven apples let's go down and right now we haven't set it to be a Trigger, so let's select our item, let's set it to be trigger, okay. And now we have this uh, simple animation, and we have 12 apples, we have added 5 to the existing 7, so we have 12 apples. So our stacking code works well, let's stop the game. So now let's select our item, let's maybe drag it into uh, the prefab section of our game, okay, prefabs. So this will be our item, and we need to, of course, set this collider to be trigger great so we may want to select the, uh, this icon here near the name and let's put here the item tag okay so now we are going to note in the scene view that there is the item here and now what we want to do is duplicate it let's move it somewhere and we are going to simply say that this inventory type will be sword and this is non-stackable and we want to add two swords 
let's try pressing play and let's see what happens so we are going to see that now we have again uh, seven uh, apples and let's see we have two swords added to our inventory because they are non-stackable okay and everything should work fine one more thing that we only want to test is let's select our data and the player inventory and let's set the size of the inventory to be four items or actually th three let's set it to be three okay now if we press play you will see that now if we press i once the inventory doesn't open uh, we need to set it to be enabled or we need to tweak our uh, functionality but for now let's uh, focus on testing our functionality okay now it works we have only three slots in our inventory so let's maybe swap the uh, apples to be on the last slot let's pick up the apples all right actually let's pick up the weapon and now as you can see we have picked up one weapon and if we take a look at our item we can see that only one weapon is remaining but we cannot really add it to our inventory but if we walk onto the apples we're going to see that we have still 12 apples so they were correctly added okay one more test that we can make is let's set our initial value of apples so our player 2 let's set the apples to be 98 so we know that we can stack more apples we can only stack one apple before we need to create a new stack of apples let's press play and let's see and as you can see we have 99 and one because we have added two apples in addition to this so let's maybe set it to let's remove this uh, last uh, apple let's press play and let's see if we can do the same with our item so now if we have uh, those two apples so actually uh, i have um, removed the wrong apple let's let's set this to 98 again let's press play and now we should have 98 apples and let's try picking up those and as you can see we have 99 and four new apples so the new slot for the apples were was created great so now we cannot pick up the weapon at all we do not have space in our inventory okay everything should work now fine you can uh, play around with the system and check if everything is indeed working but basically we have our main functionality ready next we are going to create uh, different classes for edible items and equipable items and we are going to implement this functionality so that we can right click on the item inside our inventory and we are going to see the actions connected to this item for now this is it thanks a lot for watching if you are enjoying this video leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next part see you in the next video